Hello everyone. Today's paper overview is on GraphSage, or Inductive Representation Learning on Large Graphs. Now there's no denying that the structure of graphs have offered leaps and bounds in performance for data classification tasks, perhaps because of how well they seem to encode critical information about the data set in its topology. And consequently, there's no shortage of research interest uh, regarding graphs, especially more recently in the machine learning field, where they've shown to be on par with or even outperform traditional data structures in many cases. And of course, the issue we always face with machine learning anything is how we set out to encode the data so that our weight matrices will have a somewhat easy time converging. One of the more interesting solutions are graph convolutional networks, which deserves a whole summary of its own. But even for those who aren't familiar, all you need to know really is that GCNs have a few shortcomings that limit their practicality. For one, the architecture doesn't really allow for a model to be trained in batches, where the network would converge extremely slowly or never even at all. And this, of course, means there are practical limits on how large an input graph may be. Another issue is that GCNs are transductive. They need the Laplacian matrix, that is the degree minus the adjacency matrices, to be known for the entire graph at training time. Uh, this further means that all the tests and validation nodes have to be present from the start, which practically rules out the method for anything in the real world. The paper we're looking at today is authored by William Hamilton, Rex Ying, and Jules Leskevec from the B Department of Computer Science at Stanford, and was published at the 31st Conference in ne Neural Information Processing Systems in 2017. As of now, it holds over 1,200 citations as tallied by Google Scholar, a number indicative of its sizable influence in graphs in machine learning. So GraphSage, what is it? It's a solution that seeks to address these issues while maintaining the objective advantages of working with graphs in machine learning. It stands for Graph Sampling and Aggregation, and claims to work largely on the same mathematical principles utilized by graph convolutional networks or its variants. Such as with spectral graph clustering, that is basically identifying a node through its edges and is inspired by the weisfeller lerman isomorphism tests, of course, from the way it, node fingerprints are iteratively deduced in, if their neighborhoods are structurally equivalent. Its benefits, as we'll go in, into detail in a moment, are that it's trainable in small batches or smaller portions at a time, and that the trained representations are generalizable to new inputs. More on this in a little bit. So the basic idea of GraphSage comes from the concept of sampling a set neighborhood of a node to learn its properties, rather than working over the entire graph in one big effort. A so-called neighborhood is defined by our hyperparameters where k, a set value, represents the number of steps or traversals across the node edges from a given target node, here marked in orange. The first step of k equals 1 uh, jumps to the immediately adjacent three nodes as seen in the picture, and a subsequent jump of k equals 2 would give us the final neighborhood of the highlighted blue nodes in the first figure. Now, once this neighborhood is defined, we'd like to somehow gather all the data provided to us by the selected nodes and combine them in a useful manner in a step called aggregation. Working backwards from k equals 2 this time, the feature vectors of the purple nodes will be combined through some aggregation function, which we'll discuss later. And the next step inwards towards our target nodes take these takes these embeddings and performs aggregation again, in the end producing some embedding of the target node itself. And with this, a classification of its label or a prediction of its context can be made. When we unravel one such neighborhood of a target node, uh, we'll see this sort of tree structure uh, we can think of the k, k values as a type of layer in the model, but they shouldn't be confused with the notion of depth or layers in a neural network. 
the k values that we're talking about here only refer to how many steps we want to propagate throughout the graph in the process of sampling a neighborhood. So now we have this sort of structure and the mission is to take the input features and combine them in, a, in moving upwards a layer and subsequently combining it with some latent representation of the node in that layer at each step. Uh, at k equals 1 we have the vectors coming in from the left hand side of the previous layer and they go through some aggregation transformation represented by the rounded boxes before being combined with the vectors of the current layer. And this propagates through all the way of however deep we set the k value all the way to the right so that we end up with a representation of node A that is defined by some transform over the latent representations of its neighbors, immediate neighbors D, B, and C, which in turn depend on its neighbors C, D, B, and so on. We must note here that the transformations taking place in the aggregators must be order invariant, meaning that they shouldn't be sensitive to whether we decide to sample C or D first when looking at the top left corner in this figure. Somewhat of an obvious corollary from the fact that we're not really looking for a way to extract some kind of meaning from the order of a node's neighbors, but it's important to still keep in mind when shopping for ag aggregators. More formally, uh, the layers here are expressed as, a, as the vector h at layer k, written as a superscript. Uh, and for the layer we see, first layer, we see that the vector simply becomes the feature of, of, the, of its input nodes. And each subsequent or hidden layer here is then made up of a concatenation or an aggregation of an aggregation of the preceding layer uh, transformed by some trained vac vector and the vector of the current node transformed also by some weights. And all of this is passed through some activation function and all the layers are processed sequ sequ sequentially until we arrived at the target node or vector z. Depending on the application, GraphSage can be trained both unsupervised and supervised. The embeddings that were created in the previous slide are used to learn node, inter node inter interdependency in the unsupervised case. Again, working off the premise that similar nodes will inevitably produce similar embeddings. And so the learned vectors can be used on a test node to make a guess about what input or neighborhood node nodes it has. We can also slap on a label for what predictions we'd like to make by introducing a loss function for our stochastic gradient descent and say that correct labels score positively and incorrect labels score negatively, giving us a model that would be able to classify what type of neighborhood a test node actually belongs to. The original paper illustrates some different aggregators that can be used. The mean aggregator simply takes the element-wise average values of the input nodes, notably without the concatenation with the previous layer's representation of the current node. Note here that the mean aggregator is most similar to the convolutional propagation rules that's used with the, the original graph convolution network, and as it acts as a rough linear approximation of a localized spectral convolution. Next, an LSTM-based aggregator was also considered in hopes that the model would benefit from the architecture's larger expressive capacity. But recalling that the ag aggregation step needs to be order invariant, the, in this case, if for the experiments, the node vectors were randomly permuted to prevent the LSTM from learning irrelevant sequences. And finally, a max pooling aggre aggregator is implemented as a trainable, a fully connected neural network, which would probably stand as the most general argument for the overall structure of the GraphSage algorithm. The beauty of this approach is that while we spend substantial amounts of time training, training the parameters to obtain representations of the node, uh, the weights we'd spend so much time agonizing over aren't specific to the node we're working on, meaning that they're shared across every neighborhood we look at. And the larger the portion of the graph we look at, the more generalized, hopefully, that this embedding becomes. 
And again, this comes down to the argument that there are latent structures pre present in graph representations that allow us to make predictions about a node solely based on its surroundings. And so the power of graph sage becomes apparent when a new node appears, previously never seen or trained upon, and we take those exact weights and apply them directly to its sample neighborhood and make an almost immediate prediction or classification. So to emphasize again, the two major stipulations of this method are that, are that one, there is no need to train across the entire graph from the great get-go, which is useful when imagining graphs with billions of nodes, like a social network. And secondly, any new node coming to join the present graph can be immediately embedded without necessarily retraining the model after only populating its edges, its neighborhood, appro uh, appropriately. GraphSage is then tested on a few select benchmark ta tasks to evaluate its performance, including the Web of Science dataset, whose goal is to classify academic papers into six different categories for the present experiment. The used features were node degrees and processed paper ab abstracts using a sentence embedding methods method based on WordTVec. The second task was performed on user posting data from the online discussion forum Reddit with the goal of classifying a post into one of 50 sub-communities uh, from which it was originally posted. Features involved a concatenation of an average glove embedding of the title, uh, the same for the comments, a numerical so score of the post, and the number of comments in, this, in the post. And finally, the task of classifying protein-protein interactions used pro positional gene sets, motif gene sets, and immunological signatures as its features. The methods were compared against a completely random classifier as a baseline, a logistic regression model, and also deep walk, which is a skip gram emb embedding method for graphs. Models tested were graph stage implementations with all of the aggregators mentioned previously, along with a GCN-based aggregator to give a more direct comparison to KIF's original paper on the algorithm. And the results were as follows. And while GraphSage does not does show marketing improvements in F1 score performance across the board, it is lacking in comparing the model with a more diverse set of state-of-the-art methods in graph neural networks. We see notably increases from GCN to any of the aggregated methods stated in the paper, but again, the core part would be that the approach allows us to pro process the graph inductively in small portions at a time. As an aside here, DeepWall wasn't tested on protein-protein interaction classification task because the model simply cannot be applied in the multigraph setting as with the data set. Some more remarks on the findings. The design of GraphSage naturally allows it to outperform its com competition in speed when testing unseen nodes, since algorithms like DeepWalk, or even GCN for that matter, must re-embed any new data during testing through additional rounds of stochastic gradient descent, whereas the current model only needs to apply its trained parameters to the new, new node vectors. Larger k neighborhood size or larger neighborhood depth values were also found to be of limited importance to classification accuracy but ended up increasing runtime by several orders of magnitude. Of course the exact sweet spot for k will be based on the specific use case but it's useful to note that even for social graphs of immense size uh, of the likes of Facebook or Twitter Full network connection is estimated to be achieved with only about 6 or like 10 steps. Next, the experiments found that generally the LSTM or pool-based GraphSage models perform the best across all tasks, with their gains over GCN-based GraphSage networks to be statistically significant, with a t-statistic of 1.0 and a p-value of 0.02. The Wilcoxon signed rank test was further applied to compare the mean aggregator with the two top performers to find that find only marginal statistical statistical differences with T stat of 1.5 and 4.5 and p values of 0.03 and 0.10 respectively. <laughs>
And finally, no real differences were ascertained between the LSTM and Max Pauling graphs, base graph stage networks, but it was noted here that the LSTM based model performs about twice as slow as its counterpart, making the case for pooling method for general use. All in all, GraphSage seems to have been a big step in the right direction from taking the somewhat toy problem nature of graph convoluts, conv convolutional networks and opening up many new problems to the, to the, of the real world. Performance and speed are all increased, although the former to a slightly less, lesser extent, and the model's generalizability allows graph convolution to be extended to dynamic graphs very easily. Future work noted by the original paper include looking at directed and multimodal graphs and further, uh, sampling the nodes of a neighborhood in, more, in a more selective or different non-uniform way. And that's it for today. Thanks for listening.